Well, I, I, I just concur with the, with the last speaker. I'm reminded of the comment he really collected, uh, the statement that Barbara Smith and other black feminists wrote many years ago, and they, they were clear. They said if black women were free, it would mean that everyone else would have to be free because our black women's freedom would necessitate the destruction of all the systems of oppression. So, you know, the, the, the reality, and as the previous speaker said, it is about recognizing our humanity. There is a distinct problem, it has been historically, in recognizing the humanity of black people. I'm angry. I mean, it's right. It's not new to me, but it still hurts me. I'm angry because I'm seeing what we already know is racism. The real pandemic of what we're dealing with is discrimination. We are in slavery and we acting like we're free. I want health care the way Congress get them. Don't talk to me about what they can do and can't do. If I can't get it, you can't either. She like, oh my God, hold up. <laughs> I've got herself. Look like a crystal to her. She hold it up to herself. Fill it with light. Till there are doubles and triples of infinity. Beautiful. In lungs. In lymph nodes. In black bodies. Hiding. I think one thing that we think about, you know, even during the civil rights movement, um, a part of what was happening was the black arts movement along in partnership with that. And so again, the arts, the activism um, engaged and attached to um, injustices and inequities has, is not a novel idea. started off by having these conversations, um, by realizing, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's folks in this room who have had personal experiences in which they can relate to pieces of this of this work and of this play. You know, for myself, when I first read the script, um, I was shook because I had just recently gone through something that had like shifted me. Like I was going to get a new pair of glasses and next thing I know I'm at the emergency room. I was told I had like just, you know, a lazy eye, but Long story short, I actually there was pressure building in my head that was causing that could have caused like permanent blindness. Um, I'm grateful because I'm okay, and I had a doctor who actually saw something and said, "No, something is wrong here," and pushed me to actually go and get the proper help and things that like I needed. But it's those things of just not being listened to, of not being heard, that like that's why I also just really appreciate Uplift Congo 
for you know amplifying our stories, our voices, affirming the space. It's so easy to be gaslit, or you know, uh, one of the lines that always just gets me in this play is when you know, and she says, just when you perceive, you know, that you are being treated wrong, then negative how outcomes mm -hmm. occur. Mm -hmm. That it's all about our perception, not yeah. that like actually we are having a negative experience, but that the perception of it is what makes it. Uh, bad. So it's just I'm I'm grateful that we are able to to have these conversations, to be in this room, to have a platform, uh, to be able to tell these stories. Um, I agree. This is what art is for. It, it builds. now though so you can't can you listen to these white guys because they literally wanted to abort my baby and then so the next day the nurse come in the room just a nurse i don't know maybe she's a resident i don't even know but she got her back to my niece who's in the bed with her back to her because i'm on the other side because i've stayed at night with my niece so miss ball you know the baby is not by as soon as she said but i jumped off that bed you don't get the hell out of here just get out just get out, because we've heard it before. Just get out. We've made our decision. So whatever you're talking about, we're good. Because you know, you're talking to her, you're not even looking at her. You're not even making sure that she's woke while you're talking. Miss Ball, well, you know the baby is not bad. My name is Dr. Paris Thomas. Um, I'm the executive director of Equal Hope. Some of the major disparities that African Americans face in the United States healthcare system really have to do around mistrust. Um, I think after hundreds of years of just mistrust within the system, as well as obviously, you know, research and, and clinical trials that have excluded African American or um, manipulated the results like the Tuskegee study really show. I think African Americans also have an uphill battle because when you look at the United States healthcare system, we don't happen to sit on the other side. Um, we're not always reflected in healthcare. Many of the nurses and physicians happen to be individuals um, primarily of uh, different uh, races and ethnicities. super excited when Congo Square Theater reached out to me and Miss Yolanda Ross reached out to me and said, hey, we're doing this. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so important because right now we're at a, a stage and age in our country coming out of the COVID pandemic where there is high distrust that we in science and healthcare have earned. And we've got to work super hard to earn that trust back. We also have an epidemic actually of disinformation, just false stuff everywhere, including on the internet. And unfortunately, it's not being edited or debunked. And so health really needs partnership with art and humanities right now because you all are the way to help better communicate and bridge trust with healthcare. I really believe that. And so plays, theaters like this, um, plays like this, uh, other types of art are so critical to helping to advance the message of how we heal together, how we build trust together, and how we can actually um, become healthy together. Mm -hmm. 